noted right. that there were some pock marks in some of these boulders. Oh. Never mind, he says. He says, never mind. Okay, we can just <laughs> carry on. <laughs> okay. Continuing on. Uh, what's the name of this one? You have a species uh, name? Metallogorgia melanotrichus, probably. Should be in the um, log if you need right to spell here. it. This. Uh, okay. Uh. This is like a 45 degree grade. We have a question in the chat. How far can the Nautilus go on a full tank or tanks of fuel? And I don't know the actual answer to that question, but I do know that some of our transits are up to seven days, so it can be a long oh, time. Black corals, paragorges. Um, does anyone else, Lynette, do you know the full, the longest we can take on fuel for? It's it's quite long, longer yeah. than we've ever gone. Like, I don't know, in the 40s maybe yeah, of days? Yeah, I wanted to say somewhere in the 40s. Yeah, yeah. like 45 days of fuel and food maybe. 45 days of holding DP, like, did you, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know, right. Going or like right. DP is dynamic is position. Or are we talking like eight knots for steaming? those listening? Right. It's a loaded question. I assume that's steaming. Yeah, I think so, too. You, you mentioned dynamic positioning. Can you explain that, James, for listeners? Um, yeah, sure. So the ship has what they call dynamic positioning, um, and it's controlled by GPS, and it has... I'm not sure if it incorporates... if this, view, uh, if this vessel incorporate, incorporates um, an ADCP, which monitors current. This one um, does not. It doesn't? Okay. Um, but there's definitely be uh, sensors for... Uh, wind and waves and what the dynamic positioning does is it calculates all the forces involved and holds position of the ship relative to the ground underneath it not the movement of the water so I don't know the accuracy of this particular DP system um, I've worked with Kongsberg systems that are accurate to within a, a half a meter um, and it is crucial for our operation if the boat is not able to hold position we are not able to safely work so for those at home, that means that we are not using anchors, correct? That's yes. right. Yeah. The boat is essentially live, all props spinning all the time, oh, holding position anemone. relative to wind, current, and waves. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're only, Lynette, right, piping in wind, and then the current is kind of, all other forces, current swell, are sort of estimated as the remainder of the forces being experienced but then there also is an adcp it's just not um it's not, not piped in system. yeah and also adcp sometimes is not really helpful because it, it's good at monitoring current nominee. through water column but the boat's only affected what by what's happening at the surface stored? thank you james i hope that was a sufficient Explanation. No, it was great. Oh. Crinoid. Yeah, an underhanging crinoid. Interesting yeah. spot. We, okay. mm. we couldn't really see what it was attached to, but it looked Join like that was the second one we found that was attached to the rock, right? Further off. Attached directly the to the rock? You yeah. You were asking yeah, they're not as yeah. not as frequently attached to the rocks, for they sure. Just come off the base and... Yeah. Whole depth and just go out for Sorry, a while. Actually, we're, yeah, you're give um, if front they are back row. Would you mind pausing for a second? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just mentioning because earlier you were saying it was unique. That uh, the sorry, Ash, Ashley, would you mind pausing? Hey guys, for a um, yeah. We sorry about do, that. We uh, do an operational move here. Atlanta is getting too close to the rock face. Yep. Uh, so we are moving the boat, but it yep. takes a few minutes for the boat to be able to pull it. Uh, it's faster for me to get out of danger, so I'm going to turn east. Yep. Sounds um, good. I'm going to pull it off the face so we don't hit anything. Um, and then we'll come back to it in a few minutes. That's okay. Thank you for the update. Sorry about that, James. I didn't hear you. Okay. Uh, you start tugging all the turn off auto heading. I'm not fighting you. Whoa. Okay, auto <laughs> no like auto 
we do have a, uh, we should try to take out this tether. <laughs> we have a wrap. Sorry? We have a wrap. Yeah, I turn to the left going off the, off yeah, the face. So when we come back to the face, yeah. I'll take that half wrap out. And we'll get back to our half wrap of operation. Yeah, I just noticed it's starting to, yeah, starting to come out to 20 meters, which is more of our comfort zone. So maybe we'll just hold it here for a sec, let it, it also let could it just settle be, behind us, and then we'll go back. Yeah, it also could just be like a this particular little, little ridge. Right. What was that? Oh, no. At this depth. Welcome back to, uh, what would you say? K-O-E-T, blue yeah, water. Blue water, <laughs> blue water yeah. Shrimp back. are far between. I thought you were leaving us. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pull it. As soon as you started to say started to, to come with me, I, I kind of stopped. Um, trying to let the boat kind of do that so that we don't pull it out too far and then have to deal with the swing. But right now, I only have coffee on my mind. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be backing up a little bit. Yeah. OK. OK, let's uh, turn around. That's okay. <laughs> you coming back? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Going back. Okay. So yeah, Atlanta is out of danger. Yeah. Great. So we can just, yeah, keep making our way towards five. Okay. We'll, we'll try and prioritize our excitement. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. Oh, whoops. Uh, too many levers. Bridge now. We gotta hold on. Can Sorry. we have two zero meters, one three five, please? Thank you. Someone was telling a fun story earlier today that they watched the Nautilus Live so much that their parrot started saying, bridge nav, bridge <laughs> nav. That's <laughs> funny. That's amazing. That's, that is amazing. Was it a Rennie bridge nav? <laughs> or was it a, a more animated bridge nav? <laughs> Whichever, I think it was probably exactly as we say it. <laughs> Can you tell what that yellowish yeah, thing in the center I, of the screen is? <laughs> I I think that that's a probably a dead sponge spicule pile, um, if I had to guess, but I'm not sure. Interesting. Want to slurp it? Um, we can zoom on it quick. Um, that was kind of a joke, but this isn't a joke. <laughs> we haven't taken an iskin in Looks a while, like or, or even yet. I don't know. Um, I think. We should wait on a denser community to take a Niskin. Fair enough. But thank you, you for the reminder. That. It's gold. That actually kind of just looks like s like weird look like sand, sediment. So sometimes when we cut the rocks open, you notice that it, it looks like a conglomerate sort of of that kind of sediment. So mm -hmm. it's interesting to see a pile of it. I don't know why it's right there. Um, that's good. Interesting. 
Come Just a second ago, Leela mentioned the spicules, which are small skeletal elements of sea sponges. Yeah, different different sponges make so that's their skeletal element. Are these um, kind of rayed little spiny spicules? I know you can't use the word in a definition. But it's hard <laughs> to define in another way, but uh, they can be made of either in some groups of sponges calcium carbonate or um, kind of more commonly um, silica. So siliceous spicules and the glass sponges have siliceous spicules. Um, so those are very glassy uh, in, in texture and composition. That, that looks like a bit yeah. Gorgia. Oh. Uh, where's the Walteria sponge? Well, it just went out of frame on the bottom. It looked like it was growing on the side of the rock. Did you want to take a look at that? I think I know which one you were talking about. Sure. You can see it in the down cam, right? Um, um, yeah, I think so. I yes. Know. Yeah, that's the one I was looking at. Okay. Just a quick view. Yeah, no problem. We're a little bit ahead of Analyza, so it's going oh, to okay. catch us, so sure. we do have a little bit of time. Perfect. And just complement what Lila was saying, like silica is like sand, so it would be a similar sand material. Yeah, right, there's lots of different forms oh, of that silica. that was not a sponge. That Chry was a chrysogorgid. What Lila said. Not that mm, cup one that's like on that rock right there? Here? Cup? You see a cup coral? No, gastropod. Was that little bitty thingy on the rocks right ahead? Are you talking about right by the lasers? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, wait, yeah. Look, let's zoom on uh on that right there. Are you on cup coral watch? It's the only one. Okay, cup coral There's also a tiny black coral, maybe alternatopathies or something in the back. Looks like, yeah. It's a little, little guy. Oh, it's very a little lemony thingy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's an anemone. Uh, no, no, it's a little fish. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly the sound y'all made last time we saw one. Okay, moving <laughs> on. <laughs> Do it again, I like it. It's funny. <laughs> the little baby. <laughs> He has a radio voice, Let's unless there's in. an anemone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You zoom in there, Funnels. Nice bushy little chrysogorgia. I was going to ask what that was. Tree. It's like perfectly oh, shaped. Wow. Look, yeah. the, the polyps oh, look like stars. Here. There is a squat lobster. I mean, oh. chrysogorgids yeah. very often have squat lobster associates. Is there's that a cup coral at the bottom of there? That mm. a, another Looks anemone? Looks like something. Or a Hydroid, maybe? Oh, there's a squat lobster. I see an arm moving. Yep, there's a squatty in there. And so then there's uh, probably another more. Europeticus in a lot of squat, Did in a lot of uh, chrysogorgids. This would be Estelata. Or Chrysis. Chrysogorgis or Chrysis. That's what okay. Steve says as well. And then there's more of that mucus. Uh, the webby structure. Yeah. But it's interesting that it's always the same shape. The web? Yeah. Uh, it's like a it's triangle. Triangle, mm. yeah. We have an octocoral here. Have a zoid here. Yeah, I don't know if that's a hydroid or something. Yeah. That's no, good zone, there. Zone, Thank Come you. On, I want a tree that looks like that in my front yard. And it's beautiful. It looks like the polyps almost look like stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one is so small that the polyps look giant. But <laughs> it's just that the whole thing is 10 centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe not a tree. <laughs> Might be more like a little flower. Okay, oh. Steve mentions that he was wondering if maybe the mucus could be part of these li larvation houses. We talked the other day about um, how some gelatinous animals in the water column can sink and bring a lot of organic material down to the deep sea huh. with them. And larvations are uh, such gelatinous animals that do that. So I wonder if that might just be a yeah partial larvation. That's a cool observation. Some small Victor Gorgia colonies. Oh, wow. The bottom there? That's Let's another primnoid over there. Yeah. yeah, the purple one's the Did Victor you Gorgia. See it? No, it's okay. Time. Victor okay. Gorgia as well. Okay. It's a very Turn large. Around. Is that a coral over there? This right here, yeah. It's a stick. Probably a bamboo. Bamboo. Huge one. Let's see. So, that's huge. If we can get the lasers on it. <laughs> So like one of the bamboo corals they saw earlier was just a, a tall stick looking. This one looks like it has branches on it. Is it the, a different type? Uh, 
sorry, I'm diverting again. Could we actually? I'll look. I'll look. Oh, yep, yep. Ten. Wow. That, I mean, that's got to be at, like at least two meters. Huge. Yeah. Could we look real quick at the black coral over there? So. You can see it in here. It's quite diverse in terms of bamboo corals. Just barely. These two oh, yeah. it's cool. are calling in differentiate by clade. Um, and there's definitely a there's a anima. big diversity, so yeah. sponge. I think it's a sea cucumber Could be right different there. Mm. Differentiate, because sometimes we thought on branch to one, you'd be different species of some of the branch to one, but uh, genetically we see that quite some of, of the colonies is quite related, so we're still investigating, yeah. So similar, but not the, s not the same. Oh, you're looking at the teeny tiny thing. Yeah, we call out the whole group that has Maybe the we'll same practice as um, bamboo coral, but there is several species. Yeah. Yeah. And if you zoom on the, on the bamboo coral, you can see the branch nodes and why it's you called bamboo like? coral. Okay, is there a squat lobster on the right? Is that that is the squat yes. lobster, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, come wide, so that's that story path. But this is morph? again in a terrible spot for you, isn't yeah, it, James? It's hard, is. but um, we can. D sorry, do you wanted a. If yeah, that could selection? that that could be a good sample. Yeah. Okay, well, no, see if you we manage to get. Um, if it's possible. <laughs> God, As we slide guy. away. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at the conversation with the bridge. Oh. Um, well, he we just repeats our uh, our requests back to us in like super emphatic voice. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could hear it. We used to be able to listen to the bridge, and now I back row can't do that anymore. Can you give us a uh, rendition of it? Uh, we're like, uh, right, can you hold ready? station, please? And he's like, hold station! That's the enthusiasm we need. enthusiasm we need. Oh, really there's cool. a cool urchin up there, too. I was wondering yeah. if that's what yeah, that might be. Okay, we're not going to be able to sit here and get the arm out with okay. the rock. So what we're going to do... Okay. Um, Are you going to porch to it? I'm going to try to porch it. it. Okay. Uh, can we porch out? Porch it out. Porch out, please. Oh, wait. It's different. So that one. Okay. Porch is out. Porch um, is extended. Well, can we... <laughs> if it's possible to get the arm and just like push the suction out past the end of the porch? Or hold it out in front of you? If you, oh, if you, you want, want to do that? I can uh, it's that. just it's too far in right now. Um, the porch yeah. is going to make contact with it before the suction will. And the squat lobsters like to jump and swim. And Okay, uh, so I can position it for you, I guess. Yes, please. Just push uh, it out a little bit. And then it might be easiest just to hold it there and let me approach it slowly. And make sure we've got the right jar. Um, what jar would you guys like? Five, please. Number five. I heard a mambo about that once. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they made a perfume about that once. The Chanel. <laughs> I got that song stuck in my head. I heard a rumor we can have music playing. Uh, oh, oh really? <laughs> you do hear oh, I lie. We I might go into Blue Water Radio next time. No. <laughs> uh, you said five? Yes, please. Uh, let me flush it out. It's actually happy here momentarily. I'm assuming it's going. Okay. Don't have it over 50%, uh, 60% ish. Remember, we lose our, our thrust yeah. and I need it. We are at. F uh, There's something in five, it looks like. Maybe it's like the leftover, maybe? How is five always full of leftover or something? Uh, it's fine, it can go in there. You see it though, right? I do see it. Five is okay though. If I mean, Would we, we, ra we could rather do, we could do six instead. That's fine, that's fine. I'm just pointing it out. Five is okay. We don't have a lot. That's distinguishable from a squat lobster, whatever it is. <laughs> it should be. I would hope. Okay. Maybe note that there's some something in there. I don't know. Maybe it keeps getting stuck on the mesh, and we just need to check the mesh. 
between dives. All right, here we go. Go ahead, bud. Oh, here. Sorry. Get the fingers in view for you. And then, not, yeah, I don't have to uh, go too far in front, but make sure we're out uh, past the camera. A little bit past the porch. Lynette, did you stop the boat? I thought I heard you do that. Yeah, I think it was just it's too in it that we, we can't even really see it zoomed. Yeah. What is Does it look like I have it? It's it's up there. They're um, they're gonna try and just fly by it. Okay, that's actually that's pretty good. They stop. Hold it. Right. Yeah, we don't want to. Yeah. Okay. Not doing nothing. It's, it is locked. Okay. Can we zoom in, Panos? Just so you know, that's how far it is. A little bit farther. A little bit farther. A little bit farther. Okay. Stop. You can see how far it is in the. Sorry, I'm the. Uh, you can see how far away from the. Oh porch yes. It is. Yeah, that's a good that's a good view. Thank you. Okay. Let's um. Okay, let's do a test. Um, I'm gonna come up. Can you turn on the suction, please? Suction is going at 30, 40 percent. Can I you see turn motion. It up a little bit? Oh, there we go. Okay, stop. It shouldn't hurt the squat lobster to have it at like 40. Okay, hopefully we can get in here. Hopefully the squall ops are still there. It is. Yeah, it oh, yeah, is. Okay. I can see his arm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I see you. There you go. You can see the bubble cap very well, too. Okay, hold on. I got to readjust. I'm think I'm, I think our bumper bar is hitting the... Yeah. I can come try out to from this angle. I can push it try out. Try not to go too far left for that stock. Okay, we got keep it zoomed in, please. Thank you. Is that a small hyalanema right by where the slurp is? Uh, hard to tell. Looks kind of like it. All right, there's a bit of an overhang. You're gonna have to move the. I can't get the vehicle closer. You can do this, Michael. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to um, <laughs> bump the arm out. No pressure. Hold on. Make sure we got our. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. 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 oh the rock's crumbling. It is so hard to tell depth. Suction, suction, <gasps> suction, suction. Oh, come on. I think we got him. Was it on that bridge? Yeah. It's still oh, on it's that. still oh, attached. Still there. Wow. It is just, we need more suck. More suction. That was at 50. Okay. Um, you can ramp it up. I just, as soon as that happens, the vehicle's going to float away. So hopefully, like, you wait until that moment where it looks like it's in it, and, and then, then ramp up the suction, and I'll, I'll try to just back off the cliff, and then hopefully... Um, he'll get sucked in before we lose our position. Yeah. That was great, though. Okay, let's try that again. Is he still there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I lost sight of him. It has tiny translucent arms, but it's oh, there. Oh, okay, sorry. I can see him. Okay. Oh, oh. too low. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, we'll get there, we'll get there. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, I keep coming in too low. If you're just tuning can, uh, in with us, can, we're 1,724 meters. I can meters. reposition the arm if you want. No, no, no.
Um, it's just hard to tell depth perception, that's all. It's like I'm looking through one camera. Come on, come up, come up, come up, come up. Just ramp it up. Ramp it up. Oh. Yeah, see, so I lost my... How did he hold on that first time? I don't know, that was a really on. good one. You're right underneath yep. it? Yep, yep, I'm gonna come up underneath him. You're against the rock? Yeah. Ah, shoot. All right. I mean it... If you can get your arm in there, um, like, just bump it out when I get close. Um, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just be careful with your um, your elbow and your shoulder because you're close to the rock. You might just push us away. Uh, it's locked. No, I'm sorry. If you go to move it, if you decide to just get in there. It also seems very dedicated to this black coral, and if a snip is easier, it doesn't seem like it's going to jump away, and then we would get the coral too. I think that would be perfect if it is possible. I thought by now it would have swum away, so. Right? I would have thought so too. We hit him there a few yeah. times. Yeah, so if it's possible to get a, a snip, actually, it, it seems might like it might like stay. There you go. <gasps> full suction, uh, full suction, uh, full suction. Uh, oh my god. Wow, that guy. Okay, if he, if he holds on through this, he deserves to live. <laughs> okay, there you go. Oh, Yay! nice Adam. job. Go. Teamwork makes the dream Is work. Is okay. possible oh, to get a snip, a snip of, the, of the coral? Well yeah, then. the coral piece. But let's, oh, it's in there. Yay. Good job, team. That's fantastic. Did you see it in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's in there. Oh, thank you so much. Paula, it is for you. All right, yeah. zoom out. Also, so I can Sorry, still. I was, uh, that was like, it yeah, was zoom out, please, really always. holding on. I saw it in the, in the bubble. I used bubble. All right, buddy, you can stow that arm. Or stow the um, suction sampler. We're going to want a sample of this, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. You can just let it go. There you go. That's fine. Is this something that we will put into the same slurp? Uh, we won't put it in the slurp, but uh, it'll be the same sample. Kay. I can't sit here, bud. You're gonna have to do it live. I don't like this being over. That's okay. It's on a it's on a bungee, so like if it gets bonked, it'll just hopefully it'll retract by itself. Okay, what about it? It's also soft. It's not gonna. It's fine. Um, this coral. Yeah. That, that we that just we got took the from. squat lobster off. Um, I'll try my best to p perch here where we were uh, and give you a stable platform, um, but I don't know if we're going to be able to stay here. Uh, don't wait for me. I'm trying to uh, bring us back. You can take a decent sized grab of that. Like, um, um, yeah. Yeah, great. Hold on. Uh, oh, whole colony. I got the whole thing. That's okay. Whole colony. All yeah, right. I'm coming off the. For the I'm coming. Yep. Just hold on to it, please. I come off the cliff face, and then we'll. Um, we can put it in with some of the rocks. Yeah. Maybe. Single sample. Yep. Um, Somewhere where it won't float out later. Yeah. Is it zero eight two? Yes. Yes. Somewhere where it won't float out later. Um, um, do Do you think we can put it in the in the side with one on top of the one of the rocks, starboard? Um, we would have to find a really good place to we land. Have to find a really good place to land right. with no th fine. and not use thrusters. Um. Um. Do 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 do. Is there the any way we can put it in the front? Front. Yeah, we can put it in the f in lambda. 
Um, or we can try to suction it, but it no, might be it's stuck. too it's too rigid. Let's yeah, do lambda. Would, all right. I don't know. I think it could go. You think it'll go through? Um, no, the black yeah, corals I'm are. Kind of, I'm iffy. Right. I don't want to. Piece, I don't want to. Pieces of it could. But yeah, not and then the it, gets, it gets stuck, and then we're no, no. Okay, so we got a whole uh, dark morph star pathies. Yep. With yeah. white translucent squat lobster associate. Yep. Ready? Front lambda. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Yes. Is okay. So I don't need to worry about nothing. Oh yeah, we need watch pictures. Go ahead and rack in. Is there anything in this bio box that can float out? There's a par paramaricea, paramaricea, excuse me, uh, coral colony, but I don't. It should be yellow, and it, it shouldn't float out. I don't expect it to. Okay. I'm gonna. Um, turn you, away you need to rack in a little bit. Hold on a sec. I want to. Um, yeah, yeah, I get no, you. No, no, I want to use the porch and give you space off the off the off the rock face. Sheet. All right. It's very bouncy. This was probably the most unusual thing we've been seeing on this dive, right? Is this morph of black coral and uh, you ready? And uh, wanted this can you rack the camera in? Oh, yeah, sorry, for yes. me yeah, for sure, because I haven't yeah. seen stereopods uh, um, pink before. Um, but it uh, looks like. If you want, you can also Jeremy already I think we've seen this brown one yeah, yeah. I think he has here seen in the central before Pacific. And, and be, that would be really important to check, you know, because it has yeah. also the, the yellow one. Yeah, yeah. Ready? I think most other things that the steps probably we have a good, good collections of. Yeah, that'll be fine. Lambda. Lambda. Is that all the way up? And we have also uh, Belula. Almost. Is another bump. You want another bump? Yes. Is that on the right? Other the sea star is making its way out of that box. <gasps> we need to keep it in there. <laughs> nope. Uh oh. Yeah, I was just gonna say rotate and get that stock in, and then we and then it might fall better. Nice. There you go, bud. Um, yeah, I mentioned well, uh, maybe on the Herc diagram that that sea star is uh, crawling around okay. and <laughs> That's okay. beware You're when open. And slowly, slowly coming up, so it'll... Nice. Nice job. Sweet. Thank you. Oh, All we'll right. Be on there, Mike. Thank we're really so close much. to the right side. Yes, yeah. Just give it a second. Okay, I think we're clear. Okay, Dwight, I promise we will we will make progress now. <laughs> yeah. Awesome sample. Great teamwork by the two pilots. You're welcome. Uh, is indeed fantastic. That's pretty good there, bud. And fantastic to see the ability in this type mm, of terrain yeah. managed to it's incredible. Yeah. Okay. That was fun. Good job. Okay, let's go well back to our machine. heading. Oh, you uh, floated quite a bit. Yes, yeah. No, I was, I was watching it. I was more concerned about that than what you were doing. No offense. Some fish in Atalanta. We have a comment in the chat that oh. says, I love seeing these parts of the earth for the first Another time. Thank you. And the Mastis Tahi notice down there. Thank you for all watching us. Yeah. Definitely to join us in this. Yeah, thanks for pirouetting around this too. It's a preemptive. <laughs> I can see that you're doing it though. It wasn't intentional. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we can do it, yeah. 
Um, Want to zoom in a little bit, Bottles? Yeah, a tiny zoom. Wow. Wow, they're so like evenly spaced. So bamboo, yeah, it's a specific bamboo group that branches like this. The wow. lyrate chain? structure. No. I need to remind myself which one does this. I might have it in my notes. Um, good zoom there, thanks. Oh. Maybe is it? Are the candelabras I four? Shrimp. A four. Let's look. I'm gonna look oh, back at. Cool. What are these ones called? The red ones. The proisocrinids, sea lily. Sea lily, there we go. I oh, the general like, names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the layman like me. Uh, also, I pronounce completely different. I say pros. I want to say proiso. Yeah, I like proiso better. But when ah, they said I pro said iso, no, I, I was one. like, that like actually makes Prius more sense. Like, like then I try to. You go ahead and zoom, Panos. It's a very satisfying color. Yes. They're so beautiful. And again, the, the, the base is like a different color. And you think this oh, is good observation. It's fantastic. Oh, my neck. All right, could come wide, please? I know Paola is downstairs now listening. Um, we have a question camera. why my 12 year old daughter in Florida is wondering why you all are looking for squat lobsters, besides mm. the fact that they have such an epic name. <laughs> well, we happen to have. They're really good with garlic epic. bread. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Paola Rodriguez on board, who is a squat lobster taxonomist and expert, and. Uh, one of the small group of people that works on squat lobster taxonomy around the world. She's at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard, so um, which happens also to be where we send our biological samples. But um, zoom in. she is doing a lot of characterization of, of, of new species, uh, descriptions of new species, um, and uh, oh, there's that ice. So is that an isopod in the back? Swimming? I think that might be another polychaete. No, it's an isopod isopod? of some kind. Isopod. Isopod. Yeah. Um, and so having her on board is absolutely amazing because she can tell us immediately, like, oh, that's definitely or ha very likely to be a new species and then can describe them very well in the lab uh, and then is ul ultimately the person who will be working on them at the MCZ. So we're, we have an expert aboard and are especially trying to uh, sure. take advantage of that. Uh, Trip. I think this is the I4 clade, those candelabras, I4 clade bamboos. But her, her work like, is very important in terms of assessing the biodiversity of these organisms. And usually they're so small that can be overlooked yeah. when we are looked. So <laughs> one of the things is the biodiversity. And hard to catch. You're very okay? hard because they're really, they can be quite <laughs> uh, fast when they're swimming. But also to see, to study the evolution of them, to see how they, this biodiversity is related with each <laughs> other, how they evolve, and also how they associate with other organisms, for instance, the corals as well. Thank you for that. We often almost miss them. So it's nice to get a good description and how we could do a better job watching out for them. That was one of the more impressive um, collections I've seen so far, by the yeah. way. That was a good one. That one and the um, the Clavularia rock earlier. Those were both good ones. I'm at the end there. But the, in the previous like dive, the sponge one was fantastic. Which one? Which we got the Alsus squat lobster. And uh, after yeah, how to yeah. get, catch the sponge. The turbocharger <laughs> sponge. That was good. Yeah, yeah, the end of your tether. 
Yes, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Thank you. That's why I've kind of like stopped going up the hill. We've reached the end of our tether. Just FYI, we're waiting for our Adelaide okay. to catch us. We can uh, maybe zoom quick on what's right in front of us. Mm. Black like coral. It looks like a black coral. It's a weird one. We'll go ahead and zoom on that, Panos, if you'd like. Poor guy, looks a little decrepit. It's doing its best. Yeah, definitely is a black coral. Oh, and a squat. Oh, and squat. It. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, if we could at least get a good zoom on the squatty. Oh, we're getting there. Uh, come back. There we go. Looks like it's a simple pinnel pattern. I can't, yeah. The whole squat lobster is pretty translucent. It looks like it's quite damaged, the, the colony, like some of the pinnels that the, this little branch beside, the, uh, alongside the colony is missing from the right side. This is maybe it's another Europe Tychus squat lobster. Let's see what's going on. I think I'm just getting pulled by Atalanta. I'm sorry, can no. you say that once more? I think yeah. it's maybe the Europe Tychus. There's a, this thing is like pretty. pretty yeah, we're tight. Yeah. We'll have to wait a few more minutes if you want a stabler shot. I'm just getting pulled, getting pulled around, dancing unintentionally. Are you racked in or racked out? Racked out. Not all the way, but. My squat pump still. Zoom in on that house. Uh, so now you see here we. Oops. Hey, come you. back. Could be alternate paths, but I'm not sure. But definitely is a simple pinnels. Uh, Are you saying pinnels? Well, alternate about these, does that pinnels. have the like it starts wider and they get smaller and smaller, the branches? Some of these species could be. Um, but also sometimes you see the um, abyssopathies as well, which mm. have the small, depends on the angle. So, Batipatis as well, some of them, but usually will be more large. But this one, you see th the mm -hmm. the branching start up to the middle of the... Steve was saying he, well, and obviously it's just very hard for anyone to tell in general, but you see how it, like, he was saying he thought it might be a really struggling umbellopathies that's, like, missing the other things. Oh, and okay. if you see how it's, like, there's, like, that angle Her at the very end. Yeah. It's not just a, a droop. It's, like, an actual angle. That does kind of seem like if as if there used to be more. Mm, but it's very I hard to tell. I didn't see any break branch there. You didn't. Um, so this makes me think but it's who knows? more. Because it's quite long, actually, yeah. the, the where it start pinnolate branch yeah. here, you know. Oh, that's a cool picture of that rock. Yeah. Okay, can we can, if we're moving, we can move on. Mike. Huh? Trevor just said something. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I was reading it. Oh. Does it involve us? Um, I don't know yet. Let's see. Um, yes, we should get on the move. Mm. It's concerning the pressure. It's been constant. Exactly what he's been describing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's um, in case you're flying and you think that there are pressure problems, try repeating some of these. Yeah, get think, off. yeah take off, yeah. Another crinoid. Like, crinoid is everywhere. Always. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, Dwight had said he was hoping to reach six. Six, yeah, six I right? know, I know. <laughs> Collections take time. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not certainly rushing anybody, I'm just... But yes, we should uh, definitely prioritize moving forward now. Until 
Oops. Can you zoom? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. I'm just having a great old time here. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, we saw a shrimp. Yes, we did. <laughs> Everyone's very eyes peeled for the shrimp. Looks like another one of those urchins, pen pencily urchins. Pencily? Is that, a, is that an adverb or pencil. is that an actual name? Pencil urchins are actually a group. I don't know if it's one of those from it's here, like but it looks square. sort of like it. Here. Like spelled like pencil. <laughs> well, now that we're closer, I'm almost like, is it a crinoid? Or uh, doesn't look. Looks like it's almost waving That's its oh yeah. arms. Do you want to zoom in on this? As we pass, okay. that would be zoom cool. Zoom past. It's a different one. What a really oh, cool wow. sheer rock face. Yeah, in Atalanta, you can see it's this big block. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Wait. We have an interesting question in the chat. It says, as a tide pooler and dock fowler in Southern California, I use the Light and Smith manual when I'm researching invertebrates. What manuals or books do you use for deep sea creatures? And also said, thank you for streaming this. I can nerd out on this all day long. Uh, general one, I think probably you're going to find um, zoology books sometimes has, but um, usually for taxonomy, what we do, you, you search for papers or, but this would be very technical. I, I'm not sure if you, Lila or some of what you What was the know, question? Is that guide for deep sea? The guide, the ID guide? The ID guide for gypsy animals. Do you have it yeah. for general public? Like Yeah, the NOAA ID guide. Uh, if you look up oh, yeah. uh, the NOAA uh, deep sea benthic ID guide, you will see most of the organisms we're talking about in that guide. It's just online. Oh, so you guys don't have all this memorized? I was all impressed. And <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, well, Lila Googling. certainly has they're, more they're memorized than I do. I saw the same. I thought the same thing. Uh -huh. Was that very good? Drilla Speaking there? that, that's very good, Jolly. Yeah. Yeah, you think I'm flipping through these that <laughs> fast? <laughs> yep. I do now. <laughs> Just kidding. You can zoom, Panos. Wow, it's so beautiful. That is pretty. I'm gonna make this in a pottery class. Ooh. Oh. I'll be over here with my like toothpicks and marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> Making snowmen. Like yeah. Always has some things in uh, there. Yeah, it was quite another hydroid at the base, I think. Looks like there might be something but inside the sponge about halfway up too. But always the, oh, okay. the pattern yeah, in the base. Always I'm seeing the on oh, yeah. the base of the euplectelids. Yes. Maybe just sediment. I'm not sure. Could be worth noting. What Jane. do you think might be in this inside the sponge as well? Inside the sponge, they usually moving. have shrimp. They just moved. Yeah, they have shrimp associates that ah. get trapped trapped in the sponge um, so a laser at a young age. Oh, oh, oh. And then you mentioned As that juveniles. the base was um, a. But there seems to be solitary stay hydroid there, stay there, stay there. nearby. We've, yeah, we've seen those at the base of some other sponges right. too. Right. So that's what uh, Haisa was mentioning. Worth noting. That's good there. We can move on. All right, zoom out, please. No, come on. Oh, the Atlanta Maybe. view as well is yeah. just the. Shrimp. Oh, shrimp. Shrimp. And we have a question in the chat. Are you mapping the sleep sea floor as you explore? Um, not in this moment. 
But we do certainly map before we send the ROVs down. With Lynette, do you sounder, want to talk more about it? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Would the echo sounder um, affect our navigation, our acoustic navigation? Um, it could. Um, I think our echo sounder and our USBL are different enough frequencies that right. it wouldn't wouldn't interfere. Um, yeah, but we actually mapped this seamount overnight um, and made a dive plan, um, I think late last night or early this morning um, to determine where we were gonna put the ROVs down. So yeah, this was a previously unmapped feature and it is mapped as of about, I don't know, 20 hours ago. Hi, Ray. That was a question from a, my partner, actually. Oh, <laughs> nice. We have actually had a multi-beam mounted on the ROV before, the yep. Norbit sonar. Um, and that then makes a super high resolution map from right, right underneath the ROV. There's some really good um, multi-beam sonars. Like a blue view. That's not for mapping, but um, the acoustic images are incredible. You see the fish and like sandy yeah. bottoms. You can see the crabs running across it and stuff. Like it's it's really cool. Yeah, we've used. I think it was the Norbit we were using also for like uh, at methane seeps for bubble hunting, like looking for the bubbles. Yeah. That rise up from the seafloor near methane seeps. That's also we find those sometimes with our. Um, we find larger bubble plumes with the actual sonar mounted on the bottom of the ship um, because bubbles have kind of a large acoustic signature. Looks like we are passing through different colonies of bamboo coral. Yeah. But also now that few people are asking questions, I'm going to take advantage that the day, <coughs> the day is just starting in South America. And I'm going to give a call for who wants to do questions in Portuguese or yeah. Spanish. We are here. So, hola todo mundo, salve, salve. É, estamos aqui direto do, da expedição é, do Nautilus Live. Se você é um, uma pessoa que fala português e quiser mandar alguma questão, estamos aqui à disposição. Aqui é a Raíssa Hogan, eu sou sonóloga, é, faço parte do time científico. Oh, yeah. E a gente vai ter um prazer de responder a sua pergunta. <laughs> I love when you speak Portuguese. Thank you for that. <laughs> I understand the tiniest <laughs> bits from Spanish, you know. I understood Haisa, okay. Eu falei bem devagar. Oh, sorry. I was speaking Portuguese with you. <laughs> I love I, it. I thought I spoke, I spoke very slow. <laughs> but, uh, I'm just uh, having a little tug of war with the ship. Okay. And uh, we lose that battle every time. So, <laughs> so I made note so of these. Like, Corals here. Yeah, it looks like is that a paramercia at the top or is that something else? Um, zoom could we zoom? It? I was actually thinking it looked more black corally, like staropathies. The one but at the top. The yellow uh, one. I could be wrong. No, you're right. I think. Another right. Victor Gorgia, a black coral with another squat. You're right. Paramaricid, Victor Gorgia, and then I don't know what kind of black coral. Lilipathies. That, that looks like really what we have collected before. So at first it would be lilipathies, but after when I see the spines and I start exchange, uh, yeah. talk with Opresco about, could be a sibopathies instead. Okay. The holotype of sibopathies uh, was described in uh, Indonesia. We have just two uh, species in this genus, one in the Atlantic, the described, yeah. and one in here in the Pacific. So we need further um, analysis and also do the molecular analysis for to make sure. But there is a potential that's a, in fact is a sibopathies. Cool. So, yeah. So you're saying that's the most likely idea in, in your of opinion the yeah. of the black coral? Exactly. Could we zoom on the associate on the sibopathies black coral? The black coral on the left. On to the left? Yep. Uh, yeah, I guess. actually it looks like we're going to be sitting here. Will it, is it, will it stay? Will it stay? Will it stay? 
check it. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, amazing. Not a squat. And then Lynette, after that move, if we could actually start climbing up towards uh, six, sure, that would be great. I don't, okay. We don't have to make it all the way to five. Okay. Okay, I've got some good photos of that. All right, we zoom out. Oh, fantastic, beautiful. Oh, cool stuff in the back. That looked like a, I don't know, a bathy bathies, very long and tall. Uh, bathy bass is quite the cliff. Yeah. Okay. So here's a Victor Gorgia. Yep. And this will be a, a Canto Gorgia. Yep. Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. I'm just, I see it and I'm like, oh. Well, it's a cool rock. Did I hear you say we want to go um, up the slope, right? Is that correct? After the next move, like finish out this one okay. and then uh, start climbing up. A huge crinoid. And yeah, those are unbranched uh, bamboos. Heading up slope now if you wanted okay. to. Okay. Um. That's better with respect to the ship that I'm going to do that. And I think it is. Yeah, so we're um, we're moving another 15 meters this way, but you could always get out and start. We're going to be moving kind of this direction, I right. think. A dusting of sediment on top of these. a sheer cliff or a very big rock yeah yeah so it might take a minute to get up above yeah coming up copy Little sponges, maybe, on the wall, a and a fish. Or another uh, rat tail. Uh, maybe a cusk eel. Look at this wall. Is a husky eel a fish or an eel? Uh, another eel-like fish. A cusk oh, eel is yeah. an eel-like right. fish. It's a fishy eel. I'd be curious to know what exactly makes an eel a true eel. Is it just the size of its vestigial fins or what? Oh, I'm so not a fish person. I wish I knew the answer to that. Anguilliforms uh, is the, the right. That's what uh, Steve says. Away. Too close. I'm gonna end up. Uh, I believe him. <laughs> But why do we call them eels as opposed, I mean, yes, they are. They're still fish, though. Um, some of them are eel-like, not actual eels, and some are actual eels. And I don't know enough about what makes an actual eel an actual eel to say what the difference is there. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a, that's a yeah, cool I guess a rhetorical question, fan, Chrysogorgia. And that is also a Staropathis there. Yeah. Oh. Eel with a PH. What are you? <laughs> Could we take a look at the coral in the middle of the screen right now? Yeah. This one? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, that easterly ship move is wrapping up. 
we're all set there. That's interesting. Um, but I'm going to give you some time to come up that face before we think about moving. Yeah. Have you seen it? Looks Good like idea. they. Uh, or you can go ahead and zoom in a branch, bit, or the branch broke. And yeah, the wall, I see direction. what you're saying. What's going on with the lighting? Uh, there's, it's you can see it's in the vehicle, and we just don't have the lights. I see. Coming to there you go. Ah, uh, yeah. Is this a Chrysogorgia? Yeah, it's maybe maybe a Bluto. I don't know what's a Bluto you. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I'm, oh, what is that? Caught in it. Is that like a squat lobster that died hanging on? No, I don't <laughs> no, think so. I don't think so. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's really close <laughs> into the vehicle. That yeah. is in is front it? of the camera. No, it's amazing because like we can great, see the Great pit, polyp what pictures, yeah. But this looks like some hydroids or a molt. that mass I think we have that's seen. The, yeah. That mucus. The mucus. Steve wonders oh, if it's a molt. A molt, maybe. Really interesting patterns in the rock behind it as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we're is taking the pictures. Is it possible to go to the base of the colony or more for the close of the base? Cause to look at the weird branch that happened yeah. there, yeah. Can we zoom out a little bit, Thanos? Yeah, yeah just that even right. Here it's, does it look yeah, stupid? you're right. It looks there. It looks like it, it bent in there. I can't keep turning like this. It's I gotta back up. I it was too much into the vehicle. We're gonna break it. Tim does don't not want to destroy it. Or uh, Steve does not have an ID here. He said. Here, let's see if we can get it. From, uh, it does so have weird branches. Do you see? I don't know if Steve yeah. is. Yeah. We'll get back in there. I it's just, a different. Uh, dangerous there for a second. Yeah, this is worth at least better zooms because I've never seen anything like that where it looks like it's splitting. Looks like there's a footprint on the rock there. <gasps> like legit. Yeah, <laughs> like it does. Like a duck print or something. Okay. Oof. Looking at the wrong thing. Okay. Uh, zoom in, please. Uh, now we're like at exactly the angle where you can't see they're like perfectly aligned. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can kind of see it in uh, the cinema cam if you were to go up a little bit. Uh, uh, we can try. Right. Yeah, we need um, to capture imagery in the main. Oh, now? Yeah, there you can see it a little. A little bit. That is so weird. Okay, just getting good imagery is fine, Steve camera? says. You can zoom there if you want, before we lose it. Yeah, and then we can move on after this. Oh, yeah. There's a yeah. Interesting oh, to see. There we go. It's yeah. hard to see if the tissue is still... Yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's the other I'm branch here. I'm wondering if it was like, you know, the, the All right, whole that's colony good, thank you. Uh, zoom out, please. was taken out, in, but even though they managed to rebranch and grow a different mm, right the weirdest one is the one on top though the the very top has yeah. is a bifurcation of living uh coral oh my God. we just got a message that says alien footprints in the rock face <laughs> i think that's what they're referring to yeah yeah they're like almost swirling and bowl like in some spots i got some good pictures of that as well cool i am curious about what that might mean Let's continue on. Ooh. Whoa. Uh -huh. I gotta be quick on the trigger on that. I saw its shadow before I saw it. Love so that camera. Yeah, it's still in the other camera. Oh wow, that's gonna be a great photo. Well, grab, uh, grab, grab, grab. You got it. Here, you focus. Yeah. I'll take pictures. I, for me, it's the mass moving focus here. That's being broadcasted, Did right? That take? camera. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's in uh, satellite tree. Just try a little. Oh, I think we just stunned it. And there you the can light. see really well the uh, 
the modified pectoral fins that they use mm -hmm. to feel around on the bottom when they're feeding. Okay, come oh, down. that is such a good picture. And come down, see so if we can get them in the main camera. What was the idea on that? I couldn't quite see. Some kind of cuskiel, another cuskiel. Oh yeah. Oh, you can see the purification of the. Yeah, that's great. Would you I'm stop going down, fish? Making it difficult. Fish. Oh. What were you saying about the? Oh wow. Fins on the front. Uh, that they they kind of use those as tactile, uh, sensory fins when they're so feeling yeah. around yeah. for food in the bottom right. uh, along the seafloor. They're benthic feeders. Come right again into the cinema cam. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I think oh, okay, we're good there. Bye, fish. Bye, fish. That's an overhang. Jesus. Sometimes you gotta pay attention. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Big sponge on the left in Atlanta. Polyopagon? Yeah, I think so. And a sea star. Ah, so cute. Cool. There's a few things here. And yeah, primnoid. Giant sponge up there, too. So these are the kind that we saw the other night. Yeah, the whole. In droves. That was wow. so many. I think it's like the most polyopagons I've ever seen. Mm. It's like a diagonal fissure in that rock. This is, I guess, a Cliptrophora primnoid. If it is a primnoid. It looks like. You said a Cliptrophora? If it is a primnoid, I'm always so second guessing myself between the bamboos and primnoid fans until you get a little closer. Mm. But, And then a Gonia stared sea star. Oh no, it's almost that time. Small sea stars on the sponge as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, or ophiroids. Uh, that is... Do we want to look at that or are we going to keep No, we're okay. Okay. Alright, I think I'm just going to assume that we're not going to zoom unless you tell me. Okay, that's fine. Okay. And then you don't have to listen to my voice as much, isn't that better? <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness is right. Another star. My gosh. But for me, like one is the colony divide very in the in the close of the attachment, the, uh -huh. the base. Usually, as far as I understand, what Steve passed to us is more likely to be primnoid, like Calitrophora. Mm. Then one is a little bit. Right, so because one usually one there's there's branching, but there it's like sparsely polyped until higher up. Yeah, you're saying it's there's it's like very close the base here. Yeah, yeah. Oops, missed what Steve was talking about under the star. Yeah, you starting nice. Huge rock features, my gosh. I can take pictures while you do that if you want, James. Okay. We have plenty of time, so. Is that That's a um, bamboo coral or a prim? No, actually, there's I think there two. Might be one of both. both. And then Victor Gorgia, and from here that looks like Hemicralium, but it's hard to tell. But we've been having a lot of those um, smaller, leggy or Paragorgias. Paragorgias, yeah.
Uh, can you tilt down a bit? Oh. Um, I can, but then we're not looking at what's coming and it, like, you know what I mean? When, when we stop and we we'll zoom in on something, then, then I'll bring it back to where, you know, the camera likes the light. Um, but I also need to keep looking ahead because if there's an overhang or something, like, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't want to fly okay. into it. Thank That's you. Cool. Yeah, we used to have a bigger bumper, like it would come out, yeah. but now it's like kind of shallow. Yeah. Which is nice because you can, we've been able to get close to some things where we otherwise wouldn't have been able to do it. But like, yeah, this one's got an overhang, I can't get any closer. Not comfortably. Let's keep going this way. We have a question on the chat. Zoe, aged four. That's my daughter. Hi, Zoe. Would like to ask, are eels nice? Hi, Zoe. <laughs> it's probably not my daughter. Are but eels I have nice? Me. Well, I imagine that we're pretty annoying probably coming up into the dark deep sea with these bright lights, and they seem pretty nice to us despite that. So these eels seem nice. And you're talking pretty hard. Sometimes in shallower waters. Eels can get a defensive in a way that seems mean. But that's just when people come into their space. Ooh, look at that. Wow, yeah. Wow. Whoa. Oh, that's better. Colonies. Amazing. Very pretty. Cyrus up. Wow, these are huge fans. It's incredible. Could we uh take a look at one of the pink and one of, and maybe this really big okay. one. Okay, keep going to, to right and go, actually go up the hill rather than around it. Okay, sure, we're just gonna take a quick look at these things here and then, um, I like that. You might not be able to. We are pretty, I think Adeline has turned around, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, then we'll just admire from here. Those are huge Calyptrophora primnoids. I mean, that's a massive fan. That's the largest one? Uh, yeah, the biggest one on the screen. And then I guess that's a paramarciid of some kind at the very bottom on the left. And uh, I mean, from here, those look like hemichorallium. So it seems like a lot of the times I think I'm looking at a um, paramarciid. Steve mentions that it's actually an acanthogorgia. Which is within the Paramariceids now. Okay, so it's in the Paramariceid family, but genus Acanthogorgia. Yeah, and then I think a descriptive, like they, he was mentioning earlier the long polyps, but they don't retract their polyps. So and if you see any retracted like Paramariceid, more likely towards Paramaricea, I guess. I don't know much about the Paramariceids, but um. So but change color again. That's on the correct. If they're out and look very bushy, even and if you if come close, then that's yeah, a canthogorgia. If they're more spiky, like, or, or I, I feel like they, they are more sparse for me and looks like more a gorgy, but it's, it's a guess. Yeah. <laughs> so we are seeing that. That looks like hemicrylium, by yeah. the way. We are seeing these, like, different colored bases, whoever pointed that out earlier. Yeah, I don't know what that is, like missing tissue. The, the precious corals have Do very have light pink skeletons. But, um, and then that looks like there's a bunch of zoanthids on this dead sponge stalk. That would probably have been a, I don't know, a balsam or a colficus or sacrocalyx or something at one point. <coughs> okay, we can is that a Victor Gorgia in the bottom on. right? And it's gone. That's a nice picture, though, of that. Could we pan, actually, real quick, just to the big, uh, big. big primnoid, and mm -hmm. we'll take a picture of that, and then we can move on. Get the lasers on it. Massive. Yeah. Wow, that's gorgeous. That's, that's pretty. A nice one. 
Mm. Right, like just on one side, it's like a meter and a half from the from the bifurcation at the bottom. There's another large one behind it as well. Yeah. It's at least a meter more. Yeah, m meter tall. Meter, meter tall and one meter and a half wide. All right, that's good. Thank you. Should we get a Niskin sample nearby? Ah, yes, good thinking. Go ahead, Mike. Don't wait. Let's do it quickly while it's happy. What, is, uh, what, uh, what, what number would you like? Uh, this will be um, five, please. Number five. Okay. Great thought, Jane. Um, I don't know if it's possible to spin the vehicle to, toward the right. Mm -hmm. Get the Niskins toward yeah. the Yeah. Yep. So in the description, that's um, from near an assemblage on a rock, including large Calyptrophora, Hemicralium fans. Before you do anything, let me retract the... Yep, uh, yep, I mean engaged. Okay. Right. Is that a Victor Gorgia on the rock? Right um, there, on the underside? I can't tell. It might be a small Hemicralium. Oh, and then a Paramorcia. The Paramorcia down. Yeah, it does look kind of purple. You might be right. Five, you said? Each one? Five, yeah. Five, yep. Yeah. All right. The one with the ring. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, you can go. Um, when you get in position, um, I will get us closer to the rock face, turn us, and then you just pull it, and I'll get out of dodge. Got it. Oops. And it's, we'll have plenty of pictures from what you took earlier, so it's okay. I'll still just do a sample yeah, yeah. in situ as soon as we can Sounds manage. Good. Watch camera. Is the cam on the Niskins, um, is that zoomed towards the fur the furthest out ones? Uh, the one at the bottom right of that view is number one. One, two, three, four. So five four. is okay. like barely, barely, So barely we can't actually view. see five. Okay. Barely, yeah, barely. You'll yeah. see the tape once it flips. Oh, well, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, dear. Hurry up and pull that. Ready? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, you go for it. Don't wait. I'm right next to the cliff, so. You get it? Yeah, I think I saw it. Yep. Earlier today, right. we were talking about Thank the Niskin samples. And they reminded us of the Powerball lottery balls that used to use to call out the numbers. Do you all remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Three. Five. Niskin 5. Uh, sample number oh, 083. Oh, sorry, I missed, missed that question. 83? 083, oh, correct. Um, the forearm is not on check valves, so as soon as you kill hydraulics, it'll slop underneath the elbow. So that's, that's cool there. Well done, Mike. Is that too far out? No, no, yeah. you're fine. Outside. Yep. You're good. Okay, so in the coming up the hill. Clubs camera, I think we have a colony of uh, maybe Calyptrogorgia. And it looks like Paramorcia here for me. Mm hmm. And I'm going to start, just like, remind me the Spider Webbers. Web we have in our oh. cabin <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> really? Oh, nice. Because it's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like so spider webs. Oh, there is a little dot there, purple. Oh, tiny Victor Gorgia, yeah. We don't have to zoom on any of this. We're just calling stuff out as we fly by. Roger that. You want to go back? Just for my notes, hi, so. 
Did okay. you see any other black corals besides the storopathies? I can't remember if you had mentioned there was a trisopathies, was there not? Uh, I think sure. it was sibopathies. Sibopathies, that's what it was. Um, a possible one, yeah. Was Lynette not and, yeah. and James, could you just fill me in on the movement chats? Um, we're just trying to get into a better position relative to Atalanta and the slope. So the okay. slope, um, I don't know if you can so I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Yep. Um, I'm basically facing it, going straight up it now. Okay, um, so we're, in, we're now brand going away from waypoint six. Yes, yes. Yeah, so we're going to be going due west for a little bit, so we get in a better position. Uh huh. Um, and then it's up to you guys whether you want to make it to the top of this hill or we can go back crabbing along the rock face. Yeah, I think. Uh huh. And um, we'll, you know, change what we do with the boat. So. Yeah. So because this is such a steep face right. um, to keep Atalanta in deeper water right? Um, and still have enough, you know, tether for Hercules, mm -hmm. um, we need to get sort of their alignment, like perpendicular yeah. to the slope. Mm -hmm. um, so we're bringing Hercules back up a little bit mm -hmm. um, so we can get up the hill. Yeah, and then, it, you know, more stable working conditions and better shots and easier okay. sampling, la, 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 la. You I guess the only, up the hill, right? yeah, the only thing I want is to not get um, stuck, like, on the flat section of that, you know, uh, kind of north of waypoint six. Mm -hmm. So however you think we can get toward waypoint six, um, but kind of maximizing time on the steeper okay. slope sure. works. I also think we're fighting this orientation with current because as I'm coming back, Atalanta's stepping back with me. That's an interesting rock. Yeah. You see okay. what I mean? Yeah. If you want to uh, maybe start climbing up the hill mm -hmm. from here, Path of Pathies? Okay. Path of Pathies, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, beside <laughs> uh, Victoria that Gorgia. And we have another colony of black, black coral that I couldn't identify. Uh, here's another Chrysogorgia. I don't know if that's Tricolis or, or maybe a Bluto. I don't know. Hard to tell. The other side looks like another colony. I'm not sure if it's what it is. This yellow. Here, you focus on that and I'll log stuff here. It is a tiny, I think, shrimp. <laughs> she's yeah, she's busy. Busy. <laughs> Never too busy for shrimp. <laughs> uh. Is there a magical word? <laughs> oh. I have a crinoid. Yeah. We're going to try to ID these crinoids later. Yeah, on a mission. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> and to be honest, I spent some time in 2016 in the Paris Museum with uh, Marc Eleonneux, that's uh, expert of crinoids. Oh. So I feel like, okay, I need to do yeah, it. Yeah, do this <laughs> yeah. for him. Yeah. There is a tiny colony in the other left side, but it's I could uh, ID. Oh, some sand patches that look like sponges. <laughs> you know, it's no longer a cliff face. Okay, so maybe from here we want to sort of go along the contour? Okay. Does that sound good, back row? Uh, yep, sure. Okay. <coughs> uh, you at the wave. I'm giving you as much slack as I can. You know, we're even, so like we're just we're just really stretched out. So, um, what's the boat doing at the moment? Uh, nothing at the moment. Nothing? I'm okay. about to call in a move. So we have we had. Um, 
two colonies that unfortunately fell while we are trying to stabilize in sampling. Bridge and uh, now. sometimes we we are able to to get these samples, but this terrain is quite tricky and uh, unfortunately is not possible. But yeah, usually when we can, uh, we we take advantage of the colonies or any sample that has been knocked down and we we collect it. Shrimp. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna miss the squat spot too. It's been pretty much pretty similar these sheer rock faces very mm -hmm. few of these kind of rock fields with sediment mm -hmm. speaking of rocks do we want a rock there's so many there are a lot to choose from here i don't know how many i think we we're have, okay right now but i'm sure that the next watch will want to take one soon well they can sample away 20 yeah. minutes <laughs> yeah do all the rocks they want um, um wh just so you guys know we're um as I came up the hill, yep. um, we just kind of stretched out from Atalanta, so we're waiting for the boat to pull it back to us. Okay. So we have our working tether back. All right. Okay, thank you. I was um, wondering... Uh, I would mention that, like, on the... Sorry, you go ahead, Haisa. No, I was wondering if it is to be a, a good spot to collect uh, just kinda water. Just kind of around a little bit, Let's see. Just as a control? Sure. I mean, yeah, if we're waiting, we could, and uh, but then we don't need any others for the dive, so we'll mark that the background sample has been collected. Okay, so I'm better not then. Uh, no, I, I don't see anything right here, really nearby, so it could be a good spot, and we're, if we're waiting anyway, might as well, as a background sample. So that would be number four. You know, Niskin? Yes. Did you hear that, Mike? Oh. meter hover. Uh, Steve asked to Excuse wait me. until the the top to get another uh, Yep, sorry. Skin. Steve would wait until the top. Never mind then. Never mind uh, we do have four more. No Niskin? No Niskin. No Niskin. No Niskin I. Good job Mike. Yep, I do what I can. Well done. Still kind of stretched out, eh? Yeah. It's getting better. There's definitely some sediment here. Big cloud. Doesn't usually happen. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that in a few dives. Looks like uh, mushroom coral. Mushroom coral. Yeah, closed up polyps. Mm. They look so like flowy and bendy down here, but when you collect them and the polyps are closed up, they're really quite like like a fist. <laughs> yeah. And we and we see the out the arrow no. uh, yeah, contract. So you can imagine how beautiful they are with the polyps. So just yeah. this little mush ball. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's you're like, like what's, what's this? this? <laughs> and they're always way smaller than you think they're gonna be. Tiny little knobbly thing. 
So it's incredible you can see the incision. Oh, there's a hyalinema sponge. Yeah, too much. I'm going too much again. And a big cracked block. Wow. It's a cool rock. It's very that angular. Cool. Very angular, yeah. Victorgia. And all the little bases of all the things that have lived there before. I mean, yeah, sometimes on, on edges like that, you'll see a ton of a ton of life, a ton of colonies growing. And there aren't right now, but I guess maybe at one point there were. I believe this is a bamboo. A sorry, bamboo, bamboo unstocked. It's huge. It is tall. It should be more than one meter and a half, for sure. Might have to get the boat to step west. Not that I want to bring it closer to the cliff face, um, but I can't, it's going away from us, and I'm going away from the boat, and I can't can't go anymore. All of those long colonies; those are all unbranched uh, bamboo corals. I uh, know it's uh, bamboo corals. Yeah. I'm trying to bring it dead south. And in the edge there, we can see crinoids, Victorgia, right. probably a bamboo coral in the Just, uh, left. Can't quite continue on this heading. Um, so what are the, what are the heading options? Um, we're trying to find a way to get Atalanta closer to us. Uh huh. Um, we don't want to bring it closer to the cliff face. Yep closer than 20 meters, um, but the cliff is kind of going away from us, so we're getting further and further and further away from the boat and from Atalanta, so it's just making it harder to stay stable. You can notice that we're no longer in Atalanta's yeah. view, it's because it's been spun around. Uh -huh. So we're just discussing the safest way to get that back to us. Um, if we change our heading to make, you know, to bring us closer, we're going to come off the seamount. Yeah. Um, so we're just kind of mid-discussion deciding how we're going to do that safely. Okay. Now the view of this. I always wish that you could see this from a bigger, from a further away perspective, because it looks like this really smooth flow on the right, but then it also descends into this wall in front of us. And it's kind of hard to put together in your mind how that all fits, fits together. This is nice to have Atlanta image because it usually gives us a better perspective of what we are looking. Wow, that's like a slide. I can't tell if we're looking up or to the side. You're muted. Sorry, I was muted. Um, I am looking up. I'm looking down now. We're going to back up mm -hmm. um, and get closer to Adelaide. So that way we'll have to come down the slope a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, So ultimately, what's the best, what are, or what are the options for how we can move towards waypoint six, whether those be zigzags or straight lines or, yeah, what are, at least to pass on to the next watch, 
what um, their options are. Okay. Yeah, so we can try to con like follow arm. the contour. It's just yep. that the the slope here is very steep, yep. um, so it's a little bit tricky keeping Atalanta in a safe position, yep. and then um, not having Hercules too far away. So yeah. we could continue going up the slope um, to sort of like the top, but I don't yeah. think you really want to do that because you're, you don't want to be in sort of like the flat area right. approaching waypoint six. Um, but that is so an option, okay. That is an option, um, but we are trying to follow the contour around a little more to the southeast right now uh -huh. before we head up to waypoint six. I just have to. Okay, so if we descend a little, then we can contour a little, and then we can head straight up, mm -hmm. or we can go to the flat section. Correct. Um. Why don't Why don't we actually just head up the way we were going and and over the flat section towards waypoint six? Okay. If they decide. Go then that they'd yes. rather contour than the next watch can do that, but if this is more direct. What happened? Did I turn on the line? Oh, okay. I don't know. We're just... Uh, yeah, there's just nothing going on. Yeah, there's just nothing to see. Okay, so it looks like we want to come up. Okay, so I think... I think I think we're gonna have to step the boat west. And Mike, you just have to be okay. really vigilant with uh, watching our delta depth. Does um, Atalanta have an altimeter? Sorry, Rennie, where are you? Yeah. So we just be yeah, just be you, we got to be on it. Make sure that we're coming up appropriately with the slope with the slope. Um, maybe small movements with the ship. Yeah, sorry, I'm also was talking to Rennie about that and sort of my yeah. Dwight's preference to make progress. <laughs> if we just want to, because we're going to be turning over soon. Yeah. So if you want to just like, I know what I'm saying, just get back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you want to just get into a good position for them to make yeah, that yeah. decision. Yeah, it's a lot better now. Now that, we, now that you've been backing up a bit. Because that was my problem, I could just kind of turn around. That's coming along. Okay. Is there a current? Okay. 
Wow. There's a huge. Yeah, it's a big bamboo. If you're listening at home, we're just getting ready for a watch change. We're at 1,666 meters. And it might just go quiet for just a little bit while we switch out. All right, we're going to go start our watch change. A few minutes, you'll get your introductions. <laughs> oh, yes, I can hear you. Sorry.
Hello, everybody online. Welcome to the Science Party Line. Thank you so much for joining us on Nautilus Live. We're just now finishing a watch change, so give us a moment to get settled, and then we'll come back on and introduce ourselves. All right, we're on comms, uh, Science Row. Hi, Science. Uh, can we talk through where we're going next? Yes. Um, so we would like to move expeditiously, um, so trying to get up this steeper slope um, in a pretty reasonable time period and safely towards waypoint six. Um, I think uh, we're, we want to be cognizant and not have to extend our dive time here. So we want to move upslope towards six uh, in whatever way is fastest while maintaining relative coast contact with the seafloor visually. Okay. Um, I guess on the last watch, um, it was discussed that this, if you're looking at high pack, um, yep. this kind of uh, circular route up the slope was of interest during dive planning. But is that has that changed? Um, we, we can we can move. Uh, yeah, we can move. You know, if we go due south, right? Go due south, okay. uh, and or maybe s slightly west of south, um, and try and acquire you know a spot just just east of waypoint six. Okay, so yep. not do kind yeah. of a loop towards waypoint five. There's nothing. Yeah, we don't have to hit the, the waypoints. They're just guidelines. Okay, um, we're gonna have to kind of play this by ear. We've been doing small steps, but there's also it looks like a current that is kind of blowing us off the wall. Mm -hmm. You're backing down. Yeah, because Atlanta keeps getting blown off. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, so let's try a step and see. Um, let's try a kind of southern step and see where that that lands us. Um, weather is okay for that at the moment. Uh, so Gabby, let me know when you're ready, and I'll put in a move. Let's do. Um, if you want to get back to the wall, do you want to do a small step closer to the wall, like a southeast or southwest? Okay. Um, so let's say uh, two zero zero. Bridge nav. Shrimp count. Um, let's do a, a one zero meter step two zero zero at zero point two knots, please. Did everybody else see that uh, shrimp shrimp count? Uh, that's a negative. I did not <laughs> see it, but we'll mark it anyway. <laughs> And Nav, when you have a moment uh, yeah. and you're happy with how the ship's moving, uh, I want to discuss kind of like what, what's left of the track, measure some measurements from waypoint six to the end of the dive. No, no, yeah. Definitely get the ship underway and happy first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we will probably towards the summit where it might be a bit more sparse. Um, okay. But we, yeah, these are these are good samples so far. I think we'll, if if any sampling next, we'll probably be doing some rock sampling once we the slope maybe moderates a little bit or we find some material that's um, collectible. Are you happy if I take the bubble? Yeah, go for it. Thanks. All right. So online viewers, welcome. Uh, this is the four to eight crew. This is Brittany speaking, one of the science communication fellows on the EV Nautilus. We are currently at uh, Seamount, our fourth site, exploring the Johnston Atoll region. So this is Expedition NA-153. This is a little bit shallower than what we have been diving so far uh, during this cruise. So the maximum depth was 2,000 meters, right and currently okay. we are at yeah. 1,163 meters. Going up to about 1,300 okay, meters by the end of the dive, so that actually that? will be you the shallowest point on yeah. this uh, expedition the, so uh, far Excellent. if we reach yeah. it. And we will reach it. And we will That's reach fine. it, says yeah. Steve. <laughs> 
1,300 meters, it's still going to be very dark down there, right? No sunlight. Yeah. Yep. Only the lights we bring with us. <laughs> Aw. Okay, so that move is, move is just about to complete. And yeah, that's uh, helping. Uh, okay, it, great. Yeah, Adelaide is... Hopefully it's not too helpful. Barely moved. Um, yeah. But let's see how long it takes to swing. I mean, we're pretty shallow, relatively. Yeah, we don't want it to be too helpful. <laughs> Please continue. Please. So while we're settling in, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the rest of the team here in the control room so that they can introduce themselves quickly if they'd like to. Um, so again, my name is Brittany. You're going to be hearing uh, me quite a bit. If you have any questions or comments you'd like to express during our time together, please feel free to do so. We do have a chat box just below the video feed live. So if you send a message, I will be able to see it most of the time, and uh, we'll try to address it. But sitting next to me is somebody really awesome. We have Nick. Nick, what are you doing here? Thank you for that <laughs> wonderful introduction. Uh, I'm a geologist. <laughs> it's a very thing, strange thing. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Um, so uh, I'm here from UNLV, uh, a graduate uh, uh, department of geoscience. And we're here trying to collect some rocks. And uh, hopefully, we can get some good ages out of them. Hopefully. I, I wish you well with your rocks. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Steve. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Steve Oskovich. I'm the watch lead for the 4 to 8 and the biology science lead on this cruise NA-153, the exploration around Johnson Knott's Hole, Seamount Biodiversity and Geology, uh, geological origins of the area. So my job as watch lead is to make sure we plan dives, uh, conduct dives and accomplish our sampling objectives to um, the uh, guidelines of our expedition plan and uh, making sure that we uh, yeah, accomplish all our objectives. Um, I'm primarily a, a, a postdoctoral researcher where I study deep water corals, their biodiversity, and a little bit about their ecology. And I've been focusing for the past oof, 20, no, yeah. Yeah, since 2017 or so in this area of the Central Pacific, um, between Hawaii and the equator, um, trying to understand some of the more poorly known biodiversity for the remote Central Pacific area. Um, so I'm really excited to have a chance to be here and, and dive on this site. Um, it's one that we had uh, hoped to map for quite a while because it potentially represented a shallower depth. Um, which is shallower than we expected, but not as shallower as the uh, uh, satellite telemetry s suspected. But we can talk a little bit more about why we chose this site and its significance um, after we do finish our introductions. Excellent. Thanks, Steve. All right, Bronwyn, you're up. You want to introduce yourself a little bit? Hi, my name is Bronwyn. I'm the ocean science intern for this expedition and I'm in charge of data logging when we have the ROV in the water, and then also analyzing those samples okay. when we that looks like what uh, we're take at. them out of the water and, and cataloging all of that. I yeah, that's awesome. went to the University of Hawaii at Hilo, and I'm from Kauai uh, in Hawaii. Uh, go for Zoom video. Thanks, Bronwyn. OK, so. Um, Steve, yeah, just chatting with Gabby about uh, how the vehicles are handling, um, and it sounds like uh, we think there's just going to be a lot more effort put into trying to kind of lateral along this this um, cliff. So I think we can also just start to head up the cliff, um, up the slope, and get our way to waypoint six in in a more direct manner, as you've mentioned. Um, sounds good. Cool. Okay. Is there anything along the way that there may be? Okay, wait, go ahead. We're not trying to sample anything along the way, correct? We're going to minimize our sampling okay. and unless it's like once in a lifetime okay. <laughs> type of thing. Um, cool. we'll, we, we will be on the lookout for rocks next, but um, yeah, preferably something that maybe is a little bit more moderate of a slope where we have some time. Yeah, this is the, the steepest part of the dive. It's 60 degree incline. Yeah. 
um, for about 150 meters. Okay, cool. So I think our first move is 10 meters, 10 meters. closer. Let's do it. Okay, and that's directly where Herc's pointing at the moment. Yep. So let's say two, two zero. Let's see, I am pointed, I'm not quite pointed directly at it. One sec. Two three zero. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, I see two four five. Two four five. Yes, that's what I see. Great choice. Thank you. Let's try it. Ten Love meters. It. Ten meters. Yeah, let's try it. Bridge now. May take a little while, but there's some stuff to look at. Uh, let's try one zero meters. Uh, two four five. Go for Zoom video. Just like a little bit too far away. That's okay. We've we've uh, we've gotten some really good zooms. I I wouldn't say there's anything here that we haven't really seen. Okay. Um, but if there's something really worth zooming in and I'll try and give you a yeah, firm definitely. heads up. Yeah, definitely. Let me know. Early heads up. Now, we can always, like, if there's definitely something you want to look at, we can always go tail to tail and just get, like, another two meters out of it. I think we're okay. I mean, uh, yeah, everything here is pretty similar. We haven't really moved out of the depth range where um, where we started in the bottom, uh, at, on bottom, where we have similar species uh, there as we do here. Uh, I am actually a little bit surprised that it is so um, well colonized in this area. Uh, sometimes on walls um, where you might have instabilities, there's not a lot of stuff, either because currents might be too strong or the substrate's unstable. Um, but it, it is impressive to the see. The current is definitely strong coming from mm -hmm. the port side of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why we're seeing a lot of the animals we're seeing here. Also, Steve, now that you've said that there's nothing here that we want to see, <laughs> there's going to be, <laughs> uh, gonna that, be something. That's the trigger, huh? <laughs> have to watch what we say in this It's room. a pretty high threshold. It's like near a, it would have to be like a 9 out of 10 on the wow. face melt scale. Face melt. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty melty. Yeah. Well, front row, we haven't heard from you yet. If you'd like to. Okay, I think you can start to come up a little bit. Wait, and then introduce yourself. Later. You're happy with like a 15 meter separation? Uh, yeah, somewhere, I think it's going to be like with this stretch, maybe t yeah, between 10 and 15. Okay. I'm starting to come up. Okay, nice. Uh, I'll start front row, Samantha Wishnack, navigator. Also, um, operations coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust. Yay, thanks, Samantha. Uh, Gabby Inglis, uh, ROV pilot. Uh, hi, I'm Karen Martinez, ROV pilot as well. Hi, I'm Logan Ossinjuk, uh, video engineering intern, visiting from, or I guess I just graduated from UC Santa Barbara, and also visiting from NOAA Fisheries in Oregon. Yay, all right, so you all have met the whole team. Um, again, this is the eight to four crew. We are here from four to eight. Four to eight. <laughs> 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 Woo. We've also we yet to be named. Yeah, officially. Yet to be named four to eight. We've kind of been dabbling a little. Well, um, before you name it, you have to describe it first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good thing we're not we're here from eight to four. What do you call it, Steve, the type? Are we the type? Yeah, we're the type for the 48, yeah, <laughs> locality. <laughs> Unnamed Seamount 4. <laughs> Unnamed <clears throat> 48 shift. I know. 
Sir. Josh and welcome. Uh, uh, yeah. The some of these bases, so a lot of these small circular features, calcium carbonate uh, that we're seeing on the rock are.